Now, we're just going to have an automatic on pump here. So I'm going to plug this guy in. This happens to be, I believe it's a third horsepower motor driving a piston pump. So the piston's just going back and forth in there. And uh, it happens to be three phase 480. Very efficient little pump running some real high voltage. And away she goes. And you can watch the level come down out of the pump. So we can see how fast it's going. When it hits this 50, we'll look at the clock and we'll just let it run a minute and see how fast it goes. Right now, so we're at about 30. We'll just see how long it takes to drain this thing down a ways. So now it's run 10 seconds and we've lost about four ounces. We'll see how she goes. Now this calibration tube is the red numbers, we'll use that started at zero. We're going to go down here to 10, see we're draining it, so we're going to read backwards on it. If we were filling it, we could inject into it to see how fast we were filling it. Then we'd read the black numbers and come up the scale on it. Looks like we're going to have enough time here to work this down. Okay, we're at about 45 seconds right now. And it's down there about 15 ounces. And one way I can do this is I'll just shut her down when we get to the, that's about a minute, right about now. And now we can just read and see I was reading it from the, z the red zero down and we've got about oh, 19 and a half ounces that we've pumped out of there in a minute. So that gives us our calibration at the point that we're operating it at right now. Now if I wanted to pump more liquid, I would simply lengthen the stroke of the piston. And we got it running really short right now. That little guy's just going like this. We can make it go further and we get more flow. We have got it down just about to its minimum rate right now. But that's a very positive, we know that every minute we're going to pump 19 and a half ounces of material into the system. And we can calculate out how much runtime we need to put on the proper amount of liquid over the area that we're covering. And also calculate out the, the ratio of of uh, chemical to water if we're blending the chemical in our mixing tank. So we have a lot of, there's a lot of calculations to get involved here. And again, that's another class, another time. And turf people will be involved in lots and lots of tank mixing. And the irrigation people also are going to be involved in lots and lots of tank mixing in different classes throughout your stay here at the college. Okay. Any questions about injection? The diaphragm pump works the same way, exactly, and uh, except it doesn't have chemical to piston direct contact. In between the piston and the chemical, there's a diaphragm. There's an inert, basically inert material. I think it's a Buna N rubber diaphragm that's in there. And virtually any chemical that would come in touch with that, it will not corrode it. Whereas on that piston pump, we actually have a stainless steel piston in there, but the liquid that the piston is pumping is actually touching the piston itself. Whereas we isolate the piston and the entire pump actually with that, with that diaphragm. And so the diaphragm can be far more, get far more longevity and you never have leaks on it like you can on the piston. Will that corrode then? It, yes, over time it will definitely cor corrode and we, and there's packings in there that over time have to get changed out because we can't afford any leakage. Stuff can be real corrosive obviously and also if you're having leakage at your pump, the ground area around their pump's going to get contaminated. And so if it starts to leak at all, you have to pull it out of service and repack it. Like or replace the piston even sometimes if it corrodes too much. Flush something through there to keep that from corroding? Yeah, you definitely run flush cycles on the pumps just like you do on the system itself. Now, see with the diaphragm pump, you don't have near the concern. Let's